food plots can be one of the best areas for brood rearing for quail and pheasants. Here, annual plants attract insects and provide seed and green browse that quail chicks need. Bare ground makes it easy for chicks to move about and find something to eat. Food plots are also an important source of emergency food during extreme cold and deep snow. So what size do you need for a food plot? It should be at least one-fourth acre in size. Smaller plots will not supply enough food for long winter months. Even plots less than one-half acre can be eaten by deer or large flocks of turkey. So you want to make sure there's plenty of food for quail to join in. This graph shows an area of about one-fourth acre. For a one-fourth acre field corner plot, measure along each fence 150 feet from the corner post and then connect the two points. For a food plot that is one-half acre in size, plant half of this area, or one-fourth acre, with grain and allow the other half to grow weeds for seed and cover. The following year, plant the weedy part and allow the other half to grow weeds. This rotation will provide native seeds for food, bare ground for dusting, and standing grain for emergency food. It also makes better use of the fertilizer that you have applied. Location of your food plot is an important factor to consider. You'll want to locate it near brushy draws, in corners of shrubby fence rows, and along edges of wooded areas. Old fields or idle areas are excellent. Edge feathering will recreate the low growing shrubby cover and allow weeds to grow by eliminating nearby fescue. Normally plant one grain plot for every 40 acres of farmland at minimum. On farms where grain crops are grown, fewer plots are necessary if crop residue and some grain is left standing next to cover. More plots are needed where grain crops are not grown. To begin preparation work for a food plot, start in the fall, prior to planting. You'll first need to eliminate grass sod. Spray with a contact herbicide like glyphosate or sulfosate. To get best results, consider this schedule. Mow, hay or burn in July or August to reduce residue and ensure maximum exposure of new growth to herbicide. Next, apply 2 quarts per acre of glyphosate, or 1.6 quarts per acre of sulfosate, plus 6 to 7 ounces of non-ionic surfactant in 10 to 20 gallons of water per acre. Also, add 17-pound spray-grade ammonium sulfate in a 100-gallon solution and apply between the 1st of September and November 15th, when fescue is 8 to 10 inches tall and growing. In flatter areas where erosion may not occur, the sod can be destroyed by plowing in the fall. Keep in mind that plowing will not kill persistent grasses such as fescue and smooth brome. Planting in Missouri usually happens between May 10th and June 20th, depending on the amount of spring rainfall and other local factors. When it comes time for planting, you'll need a clean tilled seed bed. The ground should be disked in early spring until there is no live vegetation. It's like a vegetable garden before planting. The fertilizer and limestone should be worked into the soil at this time. While food plots are not expected to produce 100 bushel per acre yields, some fertilizers may be needed on poor sites. Food plots will still produce brood rearing cover if grain heads do not develop. As needed, a one-fourth acre plot can be treated with at least 150 pounds of 12-12-12 or 13-13-13 fertilizer at the time of seedbed preparation. You should fertilize larger plots accordingly. If time permits, use soil test results to determine fertilizer and lime requirements. You should request a test for a 25 bushel yield per acre. Normally we recommend 25 to 50 pounds of nitrogen fertilizer when we're planting food plots, especially if it's corn or sunflowers. So figuring that there's 12 pounds of nitrogen per 100 pounds of this fertilizer formulation, if we want to put on 24 pounds of nitrogen, we need to put on 200 pounds of this formulation. And likewise, if we're going to put, wanting to put on 48 pounds of N, we need to put on 400 pounds of this fertilizer. Limestone is added to regulate the acidity of the soil, or pH. Grain sorghum grows best in a soil pH of 6 to 6.5. 
Once the soil bed is prepared, you'll need to know which kinds of grain to plant for your food plot. Sorghum or Milo seeds are rich in energy and can survive extreme cold weather. Tame millets and soybeans are most attractive to the type of insects that quail and pheasant chicks eat. Grain sorghum will give you the best results, but it can also be damaged by deer. If deer are a problem, plant forage sorghum or tame millet. This chart shows the amount of grain mixtures you'll want to plant. Planting too much seed can have an adverse effect if plants compete against each other. By following this chart, you should be able to grow the right supply of grain and weeds for food and cover. Wildlife needs just enough grain to make it through extreme winter weather. A weedy food plot is good for these colder months. But if there is too much competition, a light herbicide application may be necessary. Consult a local agri service or the university extension office in your county for recommended herbicides. Food plots may take several hours per acre to plant, depending on your equipment. Conservation contractors are available to plant food plots, and the cost will vary depending upon your needs. Food plots are an important wildlife management tool, but not the only solution. When integrated in your plan, however, food plots can provide brood-rearing cover for birds and winter grain for a variety of wildlife. Additional help can be found at your local USDA or NRCS office and from your local conservation agent or private land specialist.